In this demo, I'm going to run through uh, the security defences that F5 has uh, in terms of traffic from a single known source IP address. All right. Uh, so looking at the demonstration environment again, it's the same. We're going to deploy everything with an IAP. We're going to generate the traffic, good and bad, from um, from JMeter. Um, on the back end, we're going to actually not look at any um, logs on the device. We're going to look at custom logs uh, for the for the entirety of this demo. Okay, uh, the stuff we'll be looking at uh, will be some IP spoofing detection and mitigation. Uh, we haven't got any. Um, reverse path filtering, but we would highly recommend that. Uh, we do look at identical requests, and then I'll look at a bunch of fair use policing um, where we can do a range of things. Um, let's jump in and have a look at the demos. Okay, so we're going to configure it via the IAP. The section we look at is down the bottom here. Um, so first the um, IP address spoofing. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm enabling a detection which sees from the same IP address identical response uh, requests uh, during the TTL of the of the record that we sent to them. So really, they should be caching that. Now, um, it could be that the it was lost in the in the transmission. Um, and if it was, well, that's well, that's not good, but it's fine. Then they can legitimately ask again, um, or else what could be happening is they could be spoofing the address, and the responses aren't going back to the person who's initiating the response, uh, the request in the first place. In both cases, uh, redirecting them to TCP is a good idea. So, okay, let's uh, let's just do that, and we'll see how we go. I've reduced the number quite substantially there. Okay, so with JMeter, now this is one, so I'm coming from the same source IP address. Uh, this is an A record, and we'll send 10. Okay, and what we can see here is that um, we're seeing identical requests uh, within the TTL. And um, so it's doing that as it's saying it's redirecting it to, to TCP as expected. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's reconfigure and look at the next defense. The next one's just uh, fair use policing, uh, just uh, UDP packets. Um, right, on that particular one, uh, just like we did up, up above, um, you can set single endpoints, um, how much traffic you can accept from single endpoints, and then that's defined across all virtual servers, not just the virtual servers defined in this IAP. So just as I spoke about before, I'll show you how to set that up um, across the whole device. Um, the next one we've got here is about policing total queries per second. So I'll enable that and we'll reduce that down to something pathetic as well for the demo. Um, I'll disable that. Okay. Right, so if we just have a look at the uh, DDoS side of things here, um, under the flood protection, we looked at UDP. Under the end protection, you'll see that I can set the same sorts of things for, um, for specific endpoints. So I can say how much I'm gonna, I'm gonna detect on, so 1500 bytes, and then I can specify uh, when I'm going to rate limit on that as well. And I can update that, and you see I can put uh, protocols, the protocols that I'm going to detect on and enforce um, in that box there. Alright, now I've also uh, turned on a total queries, and I've set that at 2, so what happens when I send, send this? Okay, so what I've got is I've got um, is I've now got um, a police total queries per second. It's greater than two queries per second from that address, so we're now dropping the, the additional. So that's working too. Okay, we'll go back in and reconfigure. This next section I'm going to shun for a period of time, so I'm going to block all requests from that IP address um, if, they, if they don't meet my fair use policy. So I'm going to shun or block the IP address from the offending um, source IP, 
if they send me too many unusual query types. So I've listed some unusual query types there and I'm allowing up to two queries per second. Any more than that, I will shun the IP address for 10 seconds. Okay, um, long queries. So we'll make that 20 characters long um, and we'll allow two of them. Um, and non-existent domains. So if they're requesting things that don't exist, um, more than two uh, responses per second that are non-existent, then I'll block them as well. Okay, so we've deployed that. First one, first one I'm going to put in here. So we'll request a C name, so an unusual query type. What we get showing here is that we get unusual query types. It's exceeded two per second, so they're dropping the initial. Additional just oh sorry, that's the that's the uh, placing the total. You'll see this is shun unusual uh, query types. The maximum is exceeded. Um, two of those requests have occurred before. We've actually blocked them, and then we've started blocking the uh, IP address. This IP address is now on the blacklist, and so for 10 seconds, all communication with that uh, IP address is um, is blocked. Okay, uh, that's the C name. If we change this back to an A record, but make it a very long query type, we had a, a measure on that as well. And you'll see here that what we've got is we've exceeded the max long query type, so we've now also shunned it for the next 10 seconds. So you'll see these requests arrived um, and have been dropped immediately. We haven't processed them even at the client accept, accept phase. Okay, um, now what we'll do is we'll, that's not too long, but it's, uh, that should yield a non-existent domain. And you'll see there we go. So now we've exceeded the maximum non-existent domain uh, responses per second. So we've also blacklisted that IP address for 10 seconds as well. Okay. The last one we have here is just um, large responses. And we'll do something similar. We'll just uh, only allow uh, two large responses from a source IP address. After that, um, we'll, we'll shun the address for a period of time. Okay, so we'll make one that exists and we'll make it a long query type. We go, and you see here now we've got the max large response succeeded. Uh, so now we're shunning uh, that IP address for the next 10 seconds, and there you go, we've blacklisted it. So what we've done is we've gone through a range of uh, a range of scenarios. Um, I guess we've shown that we've earned our right to be in the path first by by actually helping out good traffic. Uh, by doing those sorts of things and then once we are in line we can do quite advanced uh, protection against uh, malicious attackers. Um, so it's sort of to conclude there's quite a lot of value uh, that F5 brings uh, in terms of its intelligent uh, DNS proposition. Uh, you know, scaling, whether it's complete control, whether it's um, IP integration, whether it's querying, whether it's uh, reducing um, reducing CPU on back-end infrastructure. We think all of it is necessary and all of it is delivered by uh, the F5 solution. Thanks for listening.